Hello everyone and welcome to PHH, the acronym for Powerhouse R, where we create a soaking room experience to worship God in an unconventional, non-traditional and non-religious manner. We gather virtually every Sunday between the hours of 3 and 4 p.m. U.S. slash Canadian Eastern Time. And, you know, we strongly believe that as, you know, we worship and adore our God, we are convinced that he will draw souls onto himself, you know, souls that are destined for the kingdom. And he will grant us our hard desires in the process. As you worship along with us today, it is our prayer that you will tangibly encounter God's presence. And we kindly request that you help us spread the love, help support us and follow, share, and subscribe to our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channel via Powerhouse R slash Soaking Room Experience, respectively. So round, right now, we want to render our God a sacrifice of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Because he alone deserves all our praises. He is a covenant keeper, a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Psalm 115 verse 1 reads, we don't deserve praise. The Lord alone deserves all the praise because of his love and faithfulness. Amen. Amen. May our praises this hour, may it, may it rise unto him like a sweet smelling perfume in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega. There is no one like you. Covenant Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, there is no one like you. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for arguments. You are God by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for arguments. You are God by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God by yourself. You've got times and season in your hands. You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. But you have chosen to call us your own. You are God, you are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for arguments. You are God by yourself. You are God, you are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God by yourself. You've got times and season in your hands. You called for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. But you have chosen to call us your You are God, you are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God by yourself. You are God, you are God. From beginning to the end, 
There's no place for arguments. You are God by yourself. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. When I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes enthroned in your love, when all the things that surround become shadows in the light of you, I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. When I look into your holiness, hallelujah. When I guess into your loveliness, when all things that surround become shadows in the light of you. When I found the joy of reaching your heart, when my will becomes enthroned in your love, when all things surround become shadows in the light of you, I worship you, I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. I worship you. I worship you. The reason I live is to worship you. Who will stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who will stand against the king? No one can. No one will. Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to God. Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to God. Who can stand? Who will stand against the king? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will, oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to God, oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to God. Who can stand? Who can stand against the king? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. 
Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to God. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to God. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to God. Oh, 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 oh victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to God. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. You fill my heart with so much peace and joy. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. All your promises are yes and amen. You're not a man you never lie. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love. Oh. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love. Oh. Your love is kind, your love is patient. You fill my heart with so much peace and joy. You're amazing, you make my life feel brand new. All your promises are yes. And amen, you're not a man, you never lie. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love. Oh. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. You fill my heart with so much peace and joy. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, you love us too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. It can only be the message of God. It can only be God's love because we don't deserve it, but because it's a good God, that is why he loves us so much and his love is excess. So we do not take that for granted. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That was beautiful. Thank you, Lord. And so today we are talking about protecting your church. Last week we talked about restoring fellowship. So this week, the passage there is Ephesians 4 verse 3. It says you're joined together with peace through the spirit. So make every effort to continue together in this way. And Colossians 3 14 says, most of all, let love guide your life. 
excess love of God, hallelujah, for then the whole church will stay together in perfect harmony. That song was just so wonderful because it's only the essence love of God. That's why we are all here because we share something in common and that's Jesus' love. That's God, isn't it? Hallelujah. And Rick Warren is saying that it is your job to protect the unity of your church. So you can't say that oh, I'm just a member of the church. You can't say that I'm nobody. I just go there to say hallelujah and come out. No, he's saying that it's your responsibility that you have to protect the unity of your church. And he, he really emphasized about unity. He says unity in the church is so important that the New Testament gives more attention to it than it is either heaven or hell. That's surprising me, you know? That's just to tell us that we need to be unified together. We need to be together in love, in peace and harmony. And it says unity is the soul of fellowship. And I love when he talked about this, that our supreme model for unity is the Trinity. And you realize that that's when you say Trinity, we mean God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you will see that many times Jesus Christ, even the, that God sent him into the world, he always referred to his Father. And he always referred to the Holy Spirit because if your life, they cannot do it alone. The three had to work together. And that's what Rick Warren is trying to emphasize here. And if you, if we remember in the Bible, when Paul and the disciples were together, the Bible said that they were unified in heart and in mind. When we are together in heart and in mind, there's nothing that we cannot do together in the church. That's why it's very important that we all be together. And that's why it was emphasizing on unity because unity is very important. Where there's, use, where there's this unity, nothing can stand. But when there's unity, we can all build the church. We can all protect the church. Hallelujah. And I love when, um, you know, even when the Bible spoke about two, that when two agree on a thing, that's to tell us the importance of unity, that when they come together and agree that so will it be, God answers it because he knows that this is a prayer of unity. Their hearts are together. Their minds are connected. So whatever they have in my name, because they are unified, I will answer them. There is power in unity. Hallelujah. And I love when he was just saying that the Bible says, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bound of peace and you know last week when we were talking about restoring fellowship and we we're talking about what we have to do as a person because if you are saying that we are christ-like we that means that we want to be like jesus and for us to be like jesus we must be able to do what jesus wants us to do and that's why we talk about what would jesus do if jesus was alive in that situation what will he do you can say that yes i'm human i'm not jesus yes you're not but he has given us the power and that anything that jesus can do he's given us that power that we can do it as well but for us to be able to protect our church we need to be unified hallelujah so it says the bible gives us practical advice and the first one so that we'll run through it quickly it says focus on what we have in common not our differences so rick warren was trying to say yeah, that what do we have in common what we have in common is jesus what we have in common is is the trinity god the father god the son god the holy spirit if jesus christ is, is taken away from this gathering we won't be here but he's saying that you don't have to celebrate your race you don't have to celebrate the differences all oh, this person can so this person is not as good as i am he's not saying that but celebrate that you need to celebrate what has brought you together you know when you celebrate Celebrate on what is, I mean, when you focus yourself on what is the main thing, you won't miss it out. But when you start focusing on the little, little things, you your mind will be diverted. You will not be able to concentrate on that. And so Paul is saying here, or and Rick Warren is saying that as believers, we share one Lord, one body, one purpose. That is the Father, one spirit, one hope, one faith, one baptism, and one law. And that is so wonderful, you know. He's saying that for us, we must stay focused on what matters most, learning to love each other as Christ as lovers and fulfilling God's five purposes for each of us and his church. And he's saying that conflict is just a way of bringing this unity into the church, right? And that we must be able to know that Jesus Christ is what is important and we must focus on that. And secondly, he's talking about be realistic in your expectation. That once you discover what God intends real fellowship to be, then you must be able to make sure that you stay focused on that. 
that you just know that the church is the body of Christ. You know, you can't say because as a person now, because your leg is not working well, and then totally you remove your high, you remove your, your body and everything. No, you just have to concentrate on the leg, isn't it? You will say, because my height is not working very well, I'm going to cut off the head. No, it's saying that you will need to be realistic in our expectation. And if we want to be, we need to focus on what the main drive is, which is Jesus Christ. And it says we must passionately love the church in spite of his imperfection. So just like the example of giving now, you will say because a part of your body is not working well to the way you want it, and then you just kill the whole of the body. No, you still have to look for a way to fix the leg so that I can still work with the body. And that's what he's trying to say here, that we should not concentrate on the imperfection, but we should come together, even in our differences, and try to work together so that there can be unity and that we can bring peace and joy to the church, which the Lord wants us to do. Hallelujah. And he said, choose to encourage rather than criticize. You know, sometimes we tend to judge and sometimes it's unknowingly, unconsciously. You may just think that this person, no, this person doesn't, when we say, let's pray, this person just go like one minute and keep quiet. It might be that one minute is just powerful. You know, we don't have to judge anybody because the Bible, even Jesus Christ was saying that judge not so that you, because you are going to be judged. So who are you to now think that you are the one to, to judge others? They might be doing things that are not right. And as a child of God, Paul makes us understand that we're correct in love, which I think we must do because in any place, there must be way to correct even the bible says that the, the word of god the bible is for correction you know there's some times that the lord wants to correct us so it's not saying that we should not correct each other but not to judge but in doing that we should choose to encourage each other if you know somebody is not living to expectation that you think that you could approach that person sister what's going on and notice what you're doing is that's not really right you know there, there are ways that you can encourage someone and speak to them and they will realize that oh this person is just judging me this person just want the best for me and when you lay it down nicely they will be able to look into it and say right this is something i should be doing myself so you're not saying that oh you you're not a child of god you look so deadly and the person will totally come in being the devil to you because you're criticizing them but we have to encourage we have by doing that we bring unity we bring love hallelujah amen and it says refuse to listen to gossip and there have been time in churches that we've debated upon gossip and people say what is gossip sometimes you know and i just love the way that rick warren explained it he said gossip is personal information when you are neither part of the problem nor part of the solution I love that. I think that's very, very explicit because you can say that, right, I, I, I was just standing by myself and they just came and started talking. What do you want me to do? Should I walk away? That would be impolite. But you are listening there and you're criticizing. You're saying, yeah, she shouldn't have done that. And you didn't listen to the other person or the other person or call them together to try to find a resolution. And you're supporting your sister because she's your bestie and then judging that other person. So in doing that, you're gossiping. And it's so easy. And honestly, God help us because it's not always easy. We find ourselves in some situations that we think that, oh no, I wasn't gossiping. But you know what? Rick Warren is trying to tell us here that we must refuse to gossip. Instead, we must look for ways to just make sure that there is peace in the church. Hallelujah. And he said, practice God's method for conflict resolution. I, I, I grew up hearing this, you know, and I'm just going to read that out because I explained, he said, um, it says here that Jesus gave the church a simple three-step process. If a fellow believer hurts you, go and tell him, walk it out between the two of you. That's the first one. If you listen, you have made a friend. If you wouldn't listen, then with one or two others along so that the presence of weaknesses will keep things honest and try again. If you still won't listen, then tell the church. You see, that is, it's taking away the gossip from there. So the first thing is that you approach the sister, sister, you've done, sister B, you've done something to me. It might be that sister B may not be, a, be approachable or may be defensive. Okay, 
let there be peace. You go, you go and call one other two or two sisters and say, right, please, I'm not just bringing you into the case, but I want there be peace. Can we just look into this? Sister B may now look at it and say, right, I didn't even look at it at that time. And if she still refuses, and you still think that there's still no peace, then the, 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 um, Paul is saying here that you should say consult the church and that they will be able to look into that. So instead of you going about holding grudges or you keeping gossip or you doing things that is not good, these are the steps that we've been advised that we should follow. You might think, oh no, I'm just that kind of person. I don't want to tell anybody and keep it in my mind. God is not encouraging us to do that. He's saying, now say it out. And I remember when we did this episode and we, we, we talked about it, that one of you, you've made all the effort, you've done everything, and still the person doesn't listen. And you're thinking, yeah, I've done all that before. So what do you want me to do? Then you leave it into the hands of God and tell God, go back to God. You've told me to do these three steps. That is what I love about our God. You can communicate with him. You can tell him the way you feel. And it sees your heart. That is one thing that I love about him. He will be the one to fight your battle as long as you've done your part and you've done it with a good heart. Not just doing it to spies and doing it to say that I just need to tick the boss, but you doing it the way you should. Hallelujah. And he says, support your pastor and leaders. This is a very important word. Many people have said that I'm not a pastor, I'm not an ordained pastor, I'm not a leader. They saw the job. Why did they take it? So why are you telling me to support them? Is their calling? Oh, as a believer, it is all our calling. Jesus Christ has called us all. We are all leaders, irrespective of the way you say it. When you go out, you are a leader demonstrating Jesus Christ because you are the ambassador of Christ. So he's saying here for the people that have been put in authority, we must support them, right? And he said they are also given the impossible task of trying to make everyone happy. You know, it's not easy to, to make everybody happy. If you're a leader in a place of work, you can make everybody happy. So even in the church, if you're a very person that's, you're very straightforward, you're very truthful, you can still make everybody happy because some people will still not like you for who you are, for even speaking the truth, they might despise you. So you just have to lead the way that you know that this is what God wants me to do. And if you do that, which is right, Jesus Christ, that is the head of the church, will be the one to put things right. But sometimes we try to put things in our own power. And it's not because we try to, but because we're human. We're thinking that I need to fix it. Leave it into the hands of God. But you as a person that attend the church, Rick Warren is saying that you must support your pastor. And I know many times people don't even pray for their pastors. Instead, they go to the pastors and the leaders, pray for me, pray for me. They call in the middle of the night. Have you even got up to even pray for that pastor so that there'll be more anointing? He can have more wisdom. Because if you have more wisdom, then the Lord will, will, will teach him the way to go. Because we are different. We have different people in the churches as well. We are all here human you know and everybody wants to be treated right everybody wants to hear sometimes what they want to hear so rick warren is saying here that we should support her pastor and our leaders hallelujah and this was a very very detailed one it says we protect the fellowship when we honor those who serve us by leading hallelujah i think that is very important for us to take on so what are we doing to support our leaders what are we doing to support our pastor yes if god may not have called you as as a pastor god may not have called you as a leader but remember you're part of the body and the pastor cannot stand alone without the church and if we are the church and we are representing jesus it is a it's a mandate to support our pastors and to support our leaders in prayers, not to support them in doing bad things, because some people say that you're telling me to support my pastor if he's not doing something right. If it is according to the will of God, then you must support your pastor in prayer, lift them up in, lift them up in prayers and even encourage them because it's not a easy task to lead people. Hallelujah. Amen. I just, I, just, I just love that. And he says something again that I'm just going to emphasize. He say, God blesses churches that are unified. That, that is so wonderful. And sometimes you have to do what is best for the body. Did you see that? Not yourself. Showing preferences to others. So sometimes it might be that you see the pastor doing something. You think, oh, that's not fair. Equality, even in, in the day of, in our day now, equality has. It doesn't mean that we have to treat everybody equally, but you treat everybody according to their circumstances or to their own situation. So the Lord will help us. So what are you doing personally to make your church family 
more warm and loving. There are many people in your community who are looking for love and a place to belong. And remember, you sometimes are the church that they see. Hallelujah. And the point to ponder on is, it is my responsibility to protect the unity of my church. And the vast to remember is let us concentrate on the things which make for harmony and the growth of fellowship together. And the question I want us to consider is, what am I personally doing to protect unity in my church family right now? And if you're not doing anything, pray to God to give you that understanding to open your eyes so that you can do what is right. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you. Holy Spirit, we give you praise. We magnify you because you're a good God. Thank you, Lord, because there's no one like you. And so, Lord, we just begin to declare how great and how wonderful you are. Father, you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the Rose of Sharon. You're the Lion of Judah. You are the I am that I am. You're the Holy God who was, who is, and who will be forevermore. Even when the world will cease to be my God, you continually be. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, because you're my confidant. Father, you are my lover. You are my supporter. Father, Lord, it is in you that I live, that I move, and I have my being. Father, I just bow at your feet, and I declare your lordship. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. Jesus. Name. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Father, we bless you. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, the Rose of Sharon, the yeah. Bright and the Morning Star, our shield, our glory, and the yeah. top of our head. You are the Portman in fire. You are the Lord that was yesterday, that is today, and you are to come. We we'll bless you. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man in battle. You are our battle hacks. You are our battle shield. You are a provider. You are the lover of our life. You are the, the father of the fatherless. You are the Lord. That, you are the friend that's still closer than a brother. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. We bless your name for a wonderful day like this. We thank give you all praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you because I know you are God at all by yourself. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the ancient today. You are the Rose of Sharon. You are the I am that I am. You are the all sufficient God. You are my physician. You are the you are my purifier. You are my master. You are my king and you are my game changer. You are my peace in the middle of storm. You are my best friend. You are my defender. You are my first choice. Father, I thank you because you are my teacher. You are my hope of glory. I thank you because you are my sustainer. You are my supplier. You are my strength. You are my shield. You are my buckler. You are the ageless. You are the endless. You are precious than good. You yes. are great and you are compassionate. Yes. You are the one that satisfies my soul. You are the God of all times and you are God of all seasons. You are the God that comments at the right time that never complains. We thank you because you are the rock that I stand. You are my ability. You are the coming, you are the coming king. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' name. You are faithful. You are holy. You are righteous. You are worthy of our praise. You are the king of glory. You dwell in unapproachable light. You are the invisible God. You are the almighty God. You are holy. You are righteous. You are glorious. You are beautiful for all situations. You are the creator of all things. Times are in your hands. You are the God of all seasons. You are the God of purpose. You are the God of destiny. We worship your excellency. We worship your majesty. You reign supreme. You reign forever. Your government has no beginning. It yes, has no yes, end. We yes, exalt yes, you, Almighty yes, God. Yes, you reign on high. The yes, earth yes, is your footstool. Yes, Heaven yes, is your yes, throne. Yes, How yes, are we, yes, oh Lord? Yes, we give you praise. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. You are the good shepherd. 
Yes, and Lord. you are the King of Kings, yes, the Lord. Ancient of Days. You are Hallelujah. beautiful in all situations. Yes, yes, there is yes, none Lord. like you. Hallelujah. When you speak, it is done. Yes, Your amen. words are yea and amen. You are the bishop and the shepherd of my soul. You are the almighty God. You are my sufficiency. You are the ageless God. You are the sleepless God. Nothing catches you by surprise. You are the beginning and the end. You are the alpha and the omega. We worship you. We appreciate you because there is none like you. No one can be compared with you. God, I love you. Love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Patient of days, we bless you. Thank you today, oh God. You are the Godhead. You are the deity. You are the divine being. And you are the divinity, oh God. You are the prophet of prophets and the hope for Israel, oh God. The divinity and counsel, God. You are my instructor and my inspirer. And you are the lion of Judah, oh God. You are an excellent God and a leader of leaders, oh God, and a compassionate God and Lord of heaven and earth, oh God, my dwelling place, my peace, my stronghold of my life, oh God, and we thank you today, oh God, thank you, God. Hallelujah, glory be to your holy name, Lord. You are the bread of life. You are the king of glory. You are the resurrected God. You are the champion of the champions. You are the winner of the winners. You are the author and the finisher of my faith. You are my glorious God. You are holy. You are my faithful God. You are my sleepless God. You wash over me day and night. You are the ancient of days, the ageless God, the eternal God, the powerful God, hallelujah, the excellent God. You are worthy, Lord. You are my compassionate God. You are my shepherd, the one that shepherds my soul. Glory be to your holy name. You are the praiseworthy God. You are dependable. You are reliable. You are loyal. You are faithful. You are forever compassionate. You are a covenant with God. Glory be to your holy name. And I just love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we bless you. We thank you. We call you wonderful. We call you mighty. We call you great. We call you powerful. We call you glorious. We call you greater. We call you mighty. Hallelujah. You are the king of kings. You are the creator of the universe. You are the judge and the vindicator of all and mine. We thank you for the cross. You are the perfect sacrifice. You are the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. You are our vindicator. You are our advocate on high. You are my intercessor. You are the one who repays me double for my trouble. You are the victorious one. The one who fights my battles and never loses any one of them. You turn morning into fencing. You turn night into day. You turn ashes into beauty. You turn shame into glory. You turn dry bones into armies. You are better than the best. You are first in everything. You are overcome. Glorious King, my all in all. Hallelujah. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. Name of Jesus Christ. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. And it is the 
name of Jesus is above and higher than every other name. No other name can compare. You are the everlasting Father, the great I am. Hello, Him, my Creator. You over my Lord God. El Shaddai, you are my supplier. Adonai, you are my master. Jehovah Jireh, you are my provider. Jehovah Rofe, you are my healer. Jehovah Nisi, you are my banner. Jehovah Makadesh, you are my sanctifier. The great I am, my king and my savior, my rock and my strong tower. You are the lion and the lamb, the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the Messiah, you are the soul coming king. You are my safety and my safety net. You are my joy, joy that feels like the river. You are my peace, peace and peace for storms of my life. I see the works of your eyes, Almighty God. You lay the foundations of the earth and the time to intervention. You lay the foundation of my life to give me an expectant end. Hallelujah. And you commanded this morning, Almighty Jehovah, to appear. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. And it's that you take bread in my name. Hallowed be your name, O Most precious, most glorious. You are the ancient of days. You are the mighty, almighty, victorious, the great name, the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Worship you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, take the will, take it from my hand, cause I can do this on my own. I'm letting go, just give me one more chance and save me from this road I'm on. Jesus, take the will. Take it, take it, take it, take it from me. Hallelujah. Take it, take it, take it from me. Hallelujah. Take it, take it, take it in Jesus' name. Amen. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, sisters, wherever you are in the old wide world. You're welcome again to Powerhouse Hour. And this is a session where we share the love of Christ and we share the love of Christ and uh, invite our brothers and sisters to receive the gift of salvation. Um, for this session, I'd like to start with some questions. And the question goes, how long have you been at the wheels of your life? How long have you been captain piloting your destiny, but yet things are not coming together? How long have you led yourselves and always still meeting at dead ends? Today, are we heavy laden by the weights of life? Especially at this time in the world, when there's so much chaos, various calamities, wars and rumors of wars, deaths left and right from COVID-19. Do you need help? Do you need rest? Or maybe you need a second chance for things to go back to the original way that the Lord made it, that the way he intended it to be before life happens to us. Do you want your peace back? And I can tell you, all these questions can be answered. They can be turned around, but only by one person. Because 2000 years ago, he knew that today was gonna come. He knew that you were gonna, we were gonna be reaching out to him today, this hour, this minute. He knew that we'll be needing him to save us, to be our saving grace, to help us and to turn things around. So I know this man and I really want to introduce him to you. Hallelujah. I know his name. I know his name. His name is Counselor. I know his name. I know his name. 
I know his name. His name is wonderful. I know his name. Do you know his name? I know his name. I know his name. His name is the Prince of Peace. I know his name. I know his name. And I would like you to know his name, who he is. He is someone you can trust. Someone that's able to answer all of your questions. He's able to meet all of your needs. And he's about to take you back to the original state. Why will I say that? Because he knew us before the foundation of the world. And the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 1.5, the message version, it says, before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of the day, I had only plans for you. A prophet to the nations. Listen to that. A prophet to the nation. That's what I had in mind for you. Meaning, regardless of, regardless of where we are right now, our situations, our circumstances, regardless of our sinful natures, how far we may have gone down in sin, how far we may have gone down to the pit, how far we may be thinking we are not redeemable. That is not possible. I'm telling you, it is possible. Because according to Jeremiah 29, 11, the word of God says, is taught towards us, I or thought of peace and not evil, not of disaster, not of calamity, but to give us a future and a hope, to bring us to an expectant end, to be a nation to the world. That's how important we are to this man that I'm about to introduce to you. He's the only one who is able to bring our peace back, yours and mine. He is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He came just for you and I. Died, went on the cross, buried, he arose and ascended into heaven. And right now, seated at the right hand of the Father, advocating for you, advocating for me. Maybe you know him. Maybe you don't. And maybe you've known him. And then you got disconnected from him. Right now, this moment, he is standing at the door of your heart. And he is knocking. He is knocking. And he is knocking. Open up, child of God. Open up. Open up. If you can open up to him this afternoon and let him come in. Hallelujah. Oh, come in, Father, Lord Jesus, to our hearts this afternoon. We are ready for you, almighty God. Come in and take your place. Hallelujah. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Are you hurt and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and your mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. 
Jesus is knocking. Jesus is calling. Hallelujah. Will you want to know about this man? Will you want to surrender? Do you want to surrender your life? Or we, sur we surrender your life to him? Will you like him to take away the heaviness you have carried for so long? The pains, the hurts that you have carried. If this is you, please say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I have led my life for too long and hasn't led to any desired end. I have carried this heavy burden called life for too long. I am kind of tired and doing it alone. I surrender all to you. Please come into my situation. Please come into my heart, into my life. Cleanse me, forgive me of all my many sins. Please give me a new life and a new hope in you. And please write my name in the book of life. So I may win with you in eternity. Amen. Oh, yes, Father, we surrender all to you. All of it, Father, Lord God, our emotions, our thoughts, everything that is going on, we surrender to you. We ask you to come in. Hallelujah. I surrender all. We surrender all unto thee, our blessed Savior. We surrender all to Jesus. I surrender all to him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. I surrender all, hallelujah. I surrender all unto thee, blessed Savior, we surrender. Oh, to Jesus we surrender, only at his feet abound. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. Hallelujah. Father, we surrender all to you. Everything, Father, take it over and give us a new beginning, new open you. In the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, you have just been reborn to the family of God. Your old life as you know it has ended. You have a new beginning in Christ Jesus. All things have become new. New joy, new peace, new purpose, new everything. Oh, please find a Bible. Believe in church. And if you start to read your Bible, you have many apps on the, you know, on the internet. You can start from the New Testament. That will tell you the account of who Jesus Christ is and who he is to you. And you can also, also reach out to us at our house hour. Our email is I help to inspire at gmail.com. The, the word I help, number two, inspire at gmail.com or you can reach out to us at any of our social media platforms listed below this video we pray that the lord bless you he will keep you and bless this new john that you are about to embark on in jesus name we love you at phh but remember christ loves you more he loves you he died for you he came for you and he's waiting for you Thank you, and have a wonderful, wonderful day, a wonderful week, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Welcome, welcome, brothers and sisters, to the household of God. We at PHH, we are so excited for you. And we know that the angels in heaven are rejoicing on your behalf. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are so pleased. And our Father is pleased with you that you have surrendered yourself unto the Lord this day. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. My sister said it earlier. He said, Jesus Christ is at the door of your heart and is knocking. And we thank God that you have opened your heart unto him. The hands of the Father are widely open yes. to work of you, Hallelujah. to his presence. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord in John 10 verse 9 says, I am the door. If anyone enter by me, you will be saved. And we go in and out and find pasture. You know, it's not only find the restoration, you will find restoration plus. Because the Bible says that you should speak forth the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. And all other things shall be added unto you. Joy, peace, speak on peace unspeakable, joy unspeakable, and every other thing that you desire in life will be added unto you. The Lord bless you Amen. as you have given yourself unto him this day. Amen. Amen. Isn't our God so awesome? It's been awesome in our midst. It's been awesome from the beginning of time, 2,000 years ago, when he sent his only begotten son to the cross of Calvary to die for our sins. He was awesome then, and he's still awesome now. And he will continue to be awesome in our lives. Hallelujah. We just want to worship this God, even as we close our ministration today. We want to tell him how much we love him. We want to tell him how awesome he has been in our midst, in our lives individually. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. I say, come into your presence. Past the gate of praise. Into your sanctuary. Till we stand in face to face. I look upon your countenance. I see the fullness of your grace. And I can only bow down and say, and say, you've been awesome in this place, mighty God. We love you, Jesus. You've been awesome in this place. Abba Father, you are worthy of our praise. To you, our life we raise. You've been awesome in this place, mighty God. You've been awesome, you've been awesome in our lives, mighty God, we love you, Jesus. You've been awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you, our life we raise. You've been awesome in this place, mighty God. You've been awesome in this place, mighty God. You've been awesome in this hour. Mighty God. And it is our prayer this day that God of peace, who raised Christ from the dead, strengthen your inner being for every good work 
as you embark in this journey, may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may He rest upon you and dwell within you this day and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us this day. Thank you for coming. We expect that you will come back again. And we know that God Almighty will journey with you, not only in this week, but for the rest of your life. And as you seek his face, you shall find him in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He's been awesome in me. Mighty God, you've been awesome in our lives, mighty God.